we're going to be looking at interference in relation to path and phase differences. So interference occurs when waves of the same type, frequency and wavelength meet and superpose. And there's two special cases of interference. There are when the waves meet in phase, so they meet in step, they meet with their peaks coincide and they meet when their troughs coincide. And if we apply the principle of superposition, we get a reinforcement of the waves. So it's known as a constructive interference because we're getting a maximum resulting wave. Another special case of interference is when the waves meet in antiphase. So there's a half a cycle difference between the waves. So when one wave is at its trough, the other will be at its peak and vice versa. And so the resulting waves cancel out. So we say this is a destructive interference resulting in a wave being minimum. This diagram is showing you two sources of waves, S1 and S2, and they're producing identical waves. So that is waves of the same type, same frequency and wavelength. And the waves are being detected at point P. Now, if we consider this case where P is equidistant from S1 and S2, so that is an equal distance from S1 and S2, then the path difference of the waves will be zero, as both the waves have travelled the same distance to get to P. If the waves started out in phase and they've travelled the same distance, then they're going to meet in phase at point P. So we say phase difference is zero degrees. And when waves meet in phase, we get constructive interference and a maximum signal will be detected. If we now consider the case where the waves from S1 arrive before the waves from S2, so that means the distance travelled by the waves from S2 to get to point P is going to be greater than the waves from S1. If we consider the path difference between the waves is equal to n lambda, where n is an integer, a whole number, of wavelengths. So the diagram here is showing you that the distance travelled by the waves from S1 is one, two and a half wavelengths to point P, whereas the waves from S2 travel a distance of one, two, three and a half wavelengths to get to point P. So the path difference in this case will be a whole wavelength. If the waves left F1 and S2 in phase, and there's a whole wavelength difference between them when they arrive at point P, then the waves will meet in phase. So there'll be a zero degrees phase difference between them. And when waves meet in phase, constructive interference occurs and a maximum signal is detected. If we now consider the case when, again, the waves from S1 arrive before the waves from S2 to point P, but now the path difference is n plus a half lambda, where n is an integer. So if n equals zero, the path difference will equal half a lambda. When n equals 1, the path difference between the waves will be 1.5 wavelengths. When n equals 2, the path difference will be 2.5 wavelengths. So you have this additional half a wavelength difference between the waves when they arrive at point P. So for this diagram, the waves from S1 have travelled a distance of 1, 2, 
and a half wavelength to get to P. However, the waves from S2 have travelled a distance of one, two, three wavelengths to get to P. So the path difference is half a wavelength. So that means there's a half a wave cycle difference between them, so the waves meet in antiphase. And we say that is equal to 180 degrees phase difference. So consider it as 180 degrees is half a circle, 360 degrees is a full circle. So half a cycle difference is 180 degrees. So when waves meet in antiphase, destructive interference occurs and a minimum signal is detected. We can use the path and phase differences between waves to determine the speed of sound in air. So here you have a signal generator set to a known frequency F. And it's connected to a loudspeaker which is generating these sound waves. And you have two microphones, M1 and M2, that are picking up the sound waves from the loudspeaker and you have an oscilloscope that is displaying the sound waves detected by the two microphones. If initially the two microphones are at the same distance from the loudspeaker, then we'll observe on the oscilloscope that the waves are in phase because the path difference is zero. If next M1 is kept stationary and M2 is moved away from the loudspeaker so that you observe the on the oscilloscope that the waves are in antiphase then the path difference between the waves reaching M1 and M2 is half a wavelength and if we move M2 even further until the waves go back into phase, then the path difference will equal the whole wavelength. So if we measure this path difference between the positions when the two microphones was first in phase and then when they were next in phase, this will give you the wavelength. And then we can use the equation V equals F lambda to work out the speed of sound. So if microphone M2 was moved a total distance of 3.2 metres from M1 and the signals were in phase eight more times during this movement, then determine the speed of the sound waves if the frequency of the wave was 850 hertz. Well, if the signals were in phase eight more times, that represents a distance of eight wavelengths. So we can say then that the eight wavelengths is our path difference, which equals 3.2 meters. So our wavelength is equal to 0 0.40 meters. And if we use the wave speed equation V equals F lambda and substitute the values for frequency and wavelength, we'll get a wave speed of 340 meters per second.